This is the next stage before I do any coding. Probably the next video you're going to see is me actually doing some coding using the uh, beer code. But I want to check with ISTA uh, because ISTA is the one that usually I've been working with. So I've got the um, power supply connected up. Um, that's not too bad. I've brought the power a little bit into the into the garage. Then we're going to go into the car. I'm going to power up ISTA with the, the yellow cable, which really does give you a problem or it warns you if the program if the voltage is, is too low. So let's have a look. Um, fit this onto the board. I think you'd agree it's quite a nice job. Just put some additional uh, ties there. Goes through there. I've tried to keep this as short as possible. I should have actually put this around the other way. So this is on that side. But uh, it doesn't matter too much. I checked the voltage. Oh, sorry I had the car on uh, on, on charge last night just to put a battery charge in there. I've got my positive and negative cables connected up and if we have a look, you couldn't see when I checked the voltage across there it was 13.22 volts. So that voltage should be okay. Uh, I'm going to go into the car. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the, uh, the ignition on one step because that's really what you need to do. So let me do that and we'll check the voltage. So uh, I'm still reading 13.26 there. On here I was reading 13.13 volts with the ignition on. So I think, so I think we're okay to get cracking. So I'm gonna reset up again into the, in the car. We're gonna be using the, the ENET cable and we have to change this setting to ENET cable and we should be good. So I'm going to get set up once we're in the car and we can crack on. Actually, I think I'll show you while we're here. So we have to go to settings. We have to go to vehicle interface. We have to go to uh, ICOM local icon local area network then we hit okay then we have to restart if we go to It hasn't picked up the host internet, so that's fine. So let's uh, okay that. Then we're gonna go into the car and we're gonna try that. Right, so here we go. It's seen the ENET. If you remember from my previous video, if I now go to select it, it's done. Now we're going to set up connection. Try and set the connection up. Okay, good. It's starting to read things. So now we know that that is working. And uh, you should have, can you see? Green cable, green light means uh, you got the connection okay. And the flashing orange means there's data going through. The battery voltage detected are 13.03. This is what I was talking to you guys about. It's within the 12.55 to 14.85. That's what you must have. Okay, so there we go. So the voltage has dropped just a wee bit, but that's okay. So uh, that's okay, it's within spec. So um, I can tweak it up a wee bit, um, but we'll see. That's, but 13 volts is okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this to go through its stuff. It takes a long time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to check this, uh, this code. I want to see if it's coming again. 
and maybe run a test plan. I've also got this SIB uh, service uh, bulletin. Uh, it's a it's an old service bulletin, but I just want to see if it holds true. So I'm going to put this on pause and come back to you in a minute. And I don't know if you can see. Mixture control fuel air mixture too rich that came in again at 5400 and we're on 5420 so it is coming uh, it is coming backwards and forwards I didn't clear this code out because I don't want to clear the code out I've actually already booked it got this booked into FAF to have a look at these two recalls so I'm going to have a look at uh, a couple of bits and pieces and I'm going to try and show you as I'm doing it or putting the camera down uh, because the stand is not really working in this car so uh, excuse this uh, bit of a uh, bit of lighting but uh, it's uh, we'll, we'll see what the best we can do okay so don't know if you can see this this uh, this is an old TSIB so uh, for it doesn't really uh, not really for my machine but um, I'm going to check the mixture adaption let the engine idle at uh, operating temperature if the mixture drops significantly below uh, below one indicates a rich mixture so this isn't really for my car but if you can see the mixture adaption is one and so what I need to do is let it get to operating temperature so I'm gonna get this up to where is it gone to? There. Operating temperature. I'm going to start the car, but I'm not sure whether I should start it with that, whether it'll screw anything up. So I'm going to go out and actually uh, switch that off and then start the car. So let's try that. So it's not really at operating temperature, but you can see it's dropped a wee bit, but it says significantly. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just let the engine run and idle. And I'm gonna see see what happens okay so I don't really want to put this on too much actually the uh, mixture is going up so I don't think it's that but again it's not uh, it's not another thing so I'm gonna have a little play around with this but I'm gonna come back to you know from bit. experience that if you leave your hood up the engine doesn't get up to operating temperature as quickly as it can be so I've closed the hot hood I've just disconnected everything and uh, we're going to let this idle up. Might be a good chance for me to go in and uh, grab a cup of coffee or a drink, a sandwich, and uh, you guys come back in a little bit and go away. Oh, well, I mean, go away, but come back in a Actually, little bit. Actually, before I come in, I want to show you, I've been playing around with a few of the facilities on here. And I, I did put a post on one of the forums saying that if you really don't have Vista, you're kind of stuffed. I mean, there are tools, but really, you really need ISTA, so, sorry about this, so, I've set it to live idling, so, I can see the engine speed, I can see the coolant temperature, I can see the engine oil temperature, and this mixture adaption, so, that's really helping me a lot, um, if we say, see here, oops, sorry, if we see here, it's under 70 degrees, it's, two degrees outside I, I want to let it get up to I don't know what they consider operating temperature I, I'm sure there is somewhere in there but I'm going to monitor this uh, let me see if the engine oil temperature goes up uh, it is there's all going up little by little uh, really maybe I want to see it in the 70s and then we can see but the mixture adaption is fine uh, so far so that looks good so I'll come back to you after I've had a cup of coffee and a donut okay so I've got the uh, the figures here, 92 degrees, 96 degrees. I was uh, having a sandwich. That's up to pretty much temperature. The mixture adaption is 95.95. Now I'll have to check with one of my guys to see if that's significantly low, but I don't think it is. So I don't think that's the issue. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the engine off, reconnect up my power supply, and I'm going to go through the test plan and see if we can uh, oops, go through the test plan and see if we can dig out anything else. And it's asking us to carry out a check on the oxygen sensor adaption. So 
So I can't find an issue on that, so that's good. This is where this uh, ISTA is fantastic. Right. Now it's going to do test cylinder specific mixture deviation. Going to carry out the check. <laughs> Terminal 15 is off, so it's put the ignition on. Now we're going to do uh, another check. So it's saying do some preparation, switch all electronics on, lights, high beam, fogs, air conditioning. So let's do lights. And then see heat in rear window, heat in, radio, I don't want really to put those in because I can't see anything that's happening, so that yeah, it should be pretty much alright. I'll just put the fogs on as well. Okay, so we've done that, let's hit continue. Disconnect the charger. Wow, well, okay, I've got to get out of the car. It's like it's doing a whole load of tests. This is uh, quite good. It was trying to do a rough idling, and you could hear, you could feel the engine rough idling. So I'm going to keep carrying on filming if I can. But uh, yeah, let's uh, just see how far this goes. So it's just saying to so please wait, so we're going to wait. And it's kind of happening again. It's kind of idling roughly, which I'm guessing is this. There we go. Can you hear, can you feel that? Can you hear that? So it's definitely doing some tests. It's telling me not to stop during the measurement, but it's definitely doing this. So this sound looks good. I'm a little bit scared that it's doing all these weird and wonderful things, but for so so far it's doing good. So I'm going to switch off for the moment and just focus on this. And as things happen, I'm going to tell you what happens. So. so, as you can see here, it's switching off the fuel injection for each cylinder or st each step. So, yeah, for you guys who are saying, well, you don't really need this, you can just get an OBD tester, you can get this and get that, you, you can't really. This is doing a lot of the donkey work, so a little bit scary, but hey, uh, it's, it's doing what it needs to do. So, I'll come back to you in a sec. It's done it. Now it's telling me to connect the charger and switch off all electronic uh, consumers. So that's what I'm going to do now. So the check was completed successfully. No mixture anomalies. Continue the test with test module. Continue. Now the next test is test the intake pipe pressure. Again, I don't know because I don't have all the right tools. So I don't even know if I can do this, but let's just see. So during the check, it's, it's asked me to do various things. So we're going to try that. Wow, look at this. It's doing all this shit automatically, man. Wow. I, I'm so enamored now with uh, Ista. It's in P. I'm just covering my brake just in case. This is really awesome. I do like this. That it's doing all this stuff automatically.
Vacuum air intake pipe is low. There we go. Looks like the you now it's got to check the intake pipe. Vacuum intake pipe is high. Hmm. Wasn't it say? It's, didn't it just say it was low? I don't know. Let's just see what it says. I'm not even touching it. This is it's doing it automatically. And it's telling me to wait. Oh, it started the car with the thingy bob on. So looks like I can start it. I have to go and check to see if the fuse is burned, but never mind. So the test was cancelled as the required pressure in the intake pipe could not be adjusted. Okay, carry out check for the leak air intake. Let's try this. Let's try this. Oops. Don't know if I can do this. I'm just going to read this a bit. So I just want to see what it says. Wants me to perform a general visual inspect the air intake, charge air deck. Now the thing is, I can't get into this to the engine bit. This is a bit I'm going to have to. No, but there is definitely an issue. Uh, perform a general visual inspection of the air intake duct. Visually inspect it. Air filter clogged or faulty. Air intake duct clogged. Ceiling cap for the oil for the neck. So I'm going to uh, bow out at this time. <laughs> I'm going to bow out at this time. Oh my god. This needs me to get into the engine bay. It's too cold. I don't want to start stripping. Sorry, this needs me to get into the engine bay and do a few bits and pieces. And I have to take stuff apart to look at that. Because the car is under warranty, um, I don't really want to do that. And I don't need to do that. So I just wanted to see if I could uh, do that. So there is an issue. So I'm going to screen grab a lot of this stuff. I'm gonna When I go to FAF, I'm going to say, hey... I did do some diagnostics, you guys can use it or lose it. Um, I'm going to post this, in Some hopefully if you guys want to chime in. Um, I'm also going to have a word with my guy um, uh, who works for BMW, name will remain anonymous, um, and just let him, let him see this. But it's not a mixture adaption, it's not a mixture adaption, there is, there's a leak. So these guys are going to be able to fix it. So, as you saw, I, I, I'm telling you now guys, this piece of test kit is awesome. There is something called, uh, it's the next. I'm going to have to look into that. But honestly, from what I've seen here, this is fantastic. You really, really, really need to get this. As you saw, it was doing a lot of testing and it at least points you in the right direction, right? Um, if your car is out of warranty, then I would say, yeah, crack on and go for it. My car is under warranty, so I don't want to start taking things apart. So yeah, I am so happy in the sense of what this, this tool can do. Um, and as there was a question someone else was asking about, uh, I think it was Filio, Filo, Filio about the using the ISTA and the, the cable and all that stuff. Hope that's answered your question. So I'm gonna go in, I've gotta do a few bits and pieces and I'm gonna go out later so at least I know what the issue is. So from yours truly, the big J and Jason, peace out into I. If you like this video, please like it, put it into orbit. And if you want to subscribe, please subscribe. It helps my, my rating, helps me to get good content. And I hope you think the content is good. So, take it easy. Love you like that. We out of here. Like a teeth in the night.